Well, good evening, everybody. And uh, again, welcome to World Whiskey Day. And uh, uh, one of our fantastic guests that we have for our whiskey show uh, backstage broadcast is Peter Semple from Distel. Uh, who's, uh, uh, he's, you'll, you'll hear his accent, but uh, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's, uh, he'll tell you about, uh, about his migration uh, around the, the whiskey world. Um, and he's the, the Distel um, you know, visitor and uh, retail visitor and facilities manager. Uh, welcome, Peter. It's good to have you on our, our broadcast. Thank you, David. It's it's nice to be coming to you live from from Scotland, and uh, I'm actually at Deanston, our Deanston Distillery today, um, speaking from you. So um, yeah, it, it's it's great to be with you and all the whiskey fans in Australia. Now, most people wouldn't know Distel as a as a company, but they certainly were very familiar with the brands, the three Scottish distilleries that fall under your umbrella, which is uh, uh, Bunahaven, Tobermory, uh, and Deanston. Uh, yeah. Are those those the ones that you really look after? Yeah, yeah. Listen, I I, um, I have a colleague who who the colleague I, I used to work with, um, our master distiller, a chap called Stephen Woodcock, used to say how lucky we were because we were one of only one hundred and twenty people who who had this specific job in Scotland because of the one hundred and twenty distilleries in Scotland. So I feel very privileged. Um, to go back to Stell, um, our owners are a South African-based company um, who who bought um, the business as, as, as when I first came into, which was called Burn Stewart Distillers in in 2014. They bought it, and um, they, their their background is spirits. And um, along with ourselves, uh, as you said, we have Bonahaven, um, Deanston, Tobermory. And our, our blended scotch, which I'm sure some of your, your, your guests today will be familiar in terms of Scottish leader um, and the black bottle. So, um, so as I say, under, we've been under Distel's ownership for, for kind of eight years now. Um, and the support has just been tremendous. The investment in our distilleries um, across, across all three has just been has allowed us to, you know, to produce our, and, and continue to produce Scotch whiskey. And then in my world, develop that, that consumer, um, that visitor experience that, that we look to convey those stories to our distillers. Now, this our, our whiskey show, which takes place on World Whiskey Day every year, uh, we clearly did not have it as a face-to-face -face event last year. Uh, this is our 10th show. Uh, and I think the first one in the world since Dramfest in New Zealand in March last year. And uh, we're very fortunate to be able to hold it in Australia. Uh, but uh, in terms of, of your role and visitors and the whole custom experience with the distilleries, uh, it must have been really challenging last year. Kind of, did you just go on holiday for a year? Uh, <laughs> were, did, <laughs> were, were any visitor facilities open? How, how did the distilleries actually operate in those times? Yeah, listen, it, 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 like like for everybody, it was and is incredibly challenging. Um, we, we see um, there's some light at the end of the tunnel now. Hopefully, um, as in Scotland, just 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 yesterday, um, the the first minister announced that we are going down. We're going down to almost the second level um, of of restrictions here, which will allow people back into the distilleries in in decent numbers. So. But yeah, no, no, it was really tough. We, we, it, it, it happened. It was. There's never a good time to happen. But from our perspective, the distilleries we're busy really from April, May time through to uh, end of October, where we see our, our three distilleries will see about sixty thousand people a year. Um, Deanston here sees the bulk of that. Uh, Tobermory will see about twelve thousand people a year. Now that that is that is people enjoying our distillery visits. Um, Tours, seeing how we distill, how we ferment, but also um, tasting tasting the whiskey, and Bunahaven, which is on which is on the Isle of Isla, um, we'll see about seven thousand. However, um, I'm sure some of you guys will be familiar with our Isla Festival of Bunahaven, and that that's a that's a big that's a big part of the year. In fact, it's it's about three or four weeks away just now. Um, so so that was a real first test, David. I mean, I actually. You know, when 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 the doors came down, when we had to close our doors last March, April time, we, we were just preparing for physio, 
um, which is the Isla Festival. And that was our first venture into the virtual world. So we, we, we had to, like yourselves and everybody else, we had to learn very, very quickly. Um, and because we're, a, we're very much a people focused business, that's, we're all about a warm welcome and ensuring people, you know, how we convey our whiskey story. So we, we, we just, we were just so keen to do it as a team and, and festival last year for Bonne Havre was really successful. Um, we managed to do a tasting for about a thousand people uh, through Facebook live and um, we sold tasting kits. So, um, and, and, and we took some lessons from that and, and thus that's how we've gone forward is that we've, we've, we've done for each of our distilleries, we do virtual tastings on a, on a monthly basis. Um, and, and yeah, and look, we, we what we tried to do was then do some, when we do distillery exclusive bottlings for, for, for the, for the distilleries for Tobamori and Lechek and Deanston, uh, we would do some tastings with them and then look to sell those online. So, so it became, um, and what was good about our business is that, that the distilleries were able to, were, we can be quite entrepreneurial and innovative. The business allows us to do that. So if, if we can, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll actually liaise with some of our visitors, our key customers who come and visit us and we'll, we'll do some tastings with them and whether they like a cask or not, and we'll involve them in that process and we'll go and select a cask and then we, we can bottle it ourselves here at the distillery. So th there was some exciting stuff, H hard work and, and nothing, but listen, nothing beats meeting people face to face. Um, but yeah, we just, I, I think, listen, it's a word I don't like using, but it's the word pivot was used a lot <laughs> and, uh, in the last 12 months. And, and, and that's really that's really what we did. And, um, you know, but listen, we didn't expect it to last so long either. So, so we're desperate. We're desperate. We used to, we see a lot of Australians coming through, coming through our distilleries. Um, and we, we just, we just miss hearing those accents and, and also just talking about Scotch whiskey and, and, and the joys, because, um, you know, as, you, as we were saying earlier, you know, and, and as you were warming me up for this, um, <laughs> you, it, it's that interaction with people you just, you just can't beat. And uh, like, as I think I said before, Scotch whiskey was built on storytelling and, and flavor and how we do it. And we've just, we've just not been able to do that in the same way. As good as the virtual world has been, it, it still doesn't beat that face to face. Well, hopefully we can visit uh, Scotland again and, uh, and and share the drams in in situ. Um, and yeah, we we know that uh, that certainly uh, uh, Isla is a, a favourite spot for Australians to visit. Bunnahaven does have a bit of a, uh, a cult following in Australia, as does uh, Tobemurray and Lechig. And uh, if we, we look at those the uh, uh, distilleries, the distillery on on Mull. Uh, you've got yeah. the two brands from the same distillery. Uh, reasons why they they were split that way. It, it, it's um when it, when it, when it was first when it first started. I mean, you know, it's interesting. I'm sitting in Deanston today, and Deanston's a re well, I would say a relatively young distillery, um, established in 1966. Um, but now with I mean, we've seen this boom of, of Scotch whiskey. Um, we're probably here at Deanston. We're probably a teenager now in in, in whiskey terms. Whereas Tullamore is 1798. And so it goes back a long way in, in, in terms of, of history. One of the oldest distilleries in Scotland, really, when we look at it. And, and, and what would have happened in, um, initially, you know, peat would have been used to fire the stills. And um, that, that's where that kind of, you know, that's where that peatiness would have come in originally, right at the very start. Um, so I think we find, I mean, it's, it's you know, as I say, just as you highlighted, for six months of the year, we produce Tomori, um, which is unpeated, you know, no, no phenolic content whatsoever. And for the for the next six months, it's 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 we use peated, it's lay check, um, which is pronounced lay a l a y check as in check made. So lay check, which is a Gaelic for for haven. It means haven, and because our distillery sits, if you if anybody's ever been. Um, Tobamori is is on the west coast of Scotland. Um, sits in the inner sits it's in the inner Hebrides, and um, our distillery sits in the in the village, the main village of of Mull, which is which is Tobamori, and it, we sit in a just underneath it. 
I suppose you could call it a cliff, like you know, it sits right snug at the bottom of a of a cliff, and that's and that's why it was known as the Haven. But I think it also refers to the harbour that, that that we sit in. So, um, so really, I, I think I think originally that's what how whiskey would have been used is, is for that peatiness, and then we've we've just continued to do it really. And I think I think I hope what you'll find as we grow Blaycheck in Australia and globally. Um, we're we're really excited by the whiskey that we're making just now. Lechek for us is a real hidden gem. Um, it has for those folks that love that smoky that smoky character. It's 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 got that in spades. Um, but also there's there's a light sweetness to it. Um, you maybe hear some a lot of our guys talk about um, uh, phenol count or, or parts per million in terms of smokiness. And um, late checks about um, it sits between 35 and 40 parts per million, whereas the big heavy PT boys that um, you know that the others like Lagavulin and Lafroy will be up about 50. Our big will be up about 50 parts per million. So we we sit, we sit just below them. So so enough for for those guys that um, for those folks that love that smoky punch, but but also we would say also kind of. It allows, it's accessible for those that are maybe just venturing into that territory and their palates are expanding um, because there's a sweetness and a, and, a, and a kind of zestiness to it, which is great. I, I would also say it, it describes Tobermory really well. It, it, we, are, we are a village of contradictions, you know, in terms of how we go about it. So I, I do think um, we're a very, friend, you know, very, very friendly place, very welcoming. Um, you know, we have a population of about... Um, uh, 2,000 people. However, in the summer it will swell to, you know, um, I don't know, 30 or 40,000. It gets so, so busy. Um, and like, I mean, I was saying to you earlier, you know, technically we see, we see about 12,000 paid visitors a year, but in reality, we're probably seeing about 100,000 people between, um, you know, 1st of April to end of October. <clears throat> so it's a very, very busy place. And um, I think it's because it's so accessible. You know, you know, we're 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 about you know maybe ninety minutes from from yeah depends. I'm I suppose I'm the one that's doing the driving, but we're maybe about ninety minutes from Glasgow, and and then it's a beautiful ferry trip. Which these, these you know for you guys, if you've ever been, it is it's one of the most most romantic things you can do as as far as I'm concerned. And we have we have what's called Calmac ferries, and you know it 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 just brings back so many. It's it's just so evocative as you. As you go across the water, so um, so yeah, so that that's 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 our that's our Tobermory. Yeah, the, the, uh, and my age is showing here, but when I when I think of Tobermory, the first thing that comes to mind is the Wombles. You familiar the with Wombles? the Wombles? Yes, absolutely. Um, yes, there's, there's um, one of the Wombles is Tobermory. <laughs> he is indeed. I know. I, I listen. I, I, we're probably the same age, David. So I remember uh, Orinoco was Orinoco one of the yeah one yeah of, yeah Orinoco Armstrong. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and well, it's 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 really interesting. We're 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 known now. We have we have great sea eagles um, um, resting on in, in Mull just now. So it's it's really known for its its wildlife. Lots of birds. Um, and, and as I say, these eagles. And then for for. I, I, my children are just slightly getting older, but there used to be a famous children's book called Balamori. I don't know whether that got to got to Australia or not. What's the story in Balamori? And basically, it was it was set in Tomori. So we had, we had a boost for that maybe about oh, twenty years ago. Um, so so yeah, but no, good point. Good point about uh, Tomori. Absolutely, and the Wombles. Mm -hmm. And just before we get into the uh, the three whiskies that we featured in the uh, in our live show, um, which uh, which we're really excited about, uh, and a bit of a bit of a naughty teaser uh, for for Australia. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, looking forward, if you have had a crystal ball in terms of of, of trends, uh, challenges reaching the worldwide audience, uh, we know that there are logistical challenges, even just getting stuff from from Scotland around the world, and and particularly Australia because we're just so bloody far away. Uh, <laughs> you obviously, guys, have you, you've done your scenario planning and uh, projections of uh, where, where the industry's going? Yeah. yeah, no, listen, absolutely. I mean, I mean, being able to speak to you folks today is is, is, a, is a wee bit of a rare treat, and not not just due to the kind of pandemic. Um, it, it has all been about budgets for us and, and forecasting. I mean, I mean, throughout we have continued to distill. Um, you know, Deanston, Tobermory, Bonahaven. 
the, the boys and, and girls there have continued to distill through that process. Um, so what ultimately what has happened it has been really interesting. Where we've not been able to see visitors, um, and I don't know what it's been like in Australia, David, but um, sales of single malt Scotch whiskey have never been better. We have, we have absolutely gone through the roof. And um, now, don't get me wrong, we're, all three distilleries are actually here, are going seven day production um, as, of, as of maybe a few weeks ago. Uh, although Bunnahav and Michael, I think Bunnahav is going to go in August, seven days, which is the first time that has happened for many a year. Now, obviously, we'll not see that whiskey for, for, for 10, 12 years or whatever. But um, I think it's just indicative of, of how um, folk have been, you know, you know, drinking, uh, consuming in other ways, you know, rather than, than going out. Now, hopefully what, what we see as a trend going forward is that, um, you know, people will, will start to venture out once they feel it's safe to do so and, and, and come to places like ourselves and the restaurants and the hospitality sector um, when it's safe to do so, and and also, you know, um, you know, when, I mean, we have worked really hard in terms of COVID, um, um, you know, um, precautions and, and and standards. A bit like yourselves, you know, the week this weekend where you've got the social distancing, distancing and capacity has been cut because of that. But again, all for all the right reasons, and it's 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 more about getting back on that journey of of people socialising again and. And speaking, because like I was saying earlier, you just can't beat that interaction, that one-to-one -one interaction. So, so like we, I mean, we do not see. Um, we we continue. We think the virtual world like this will continue to happen, and and I, and I think it has been really good for us. You know, um, you know, we've we've been able to continue conversations with our customers and our our visitors um, throughout this process, which has been excellent. I mean, e even as a business, you know, I was speaking to our colleague, my colleague yesterday, and, you know, up until March last year, I, I remember getting told off for not making a meeting. That how, how could you not, you know, um, how, how do you expect to phone in? What ways that to do a business? What, what ways that to do a meeting? And, and it's just, I couldn't get there. However, look at us now, everything is done. <laughs> everything is done pretty much either from our homes or, I mean, I'm fortunate today, I'm in the distillery today. So again, I, I, th I think that, that that speed of change and then, you know, that the D2C is, as, as, is the buzzwords at the moment, that direct to consumer thing will continue. Um, and then for us, look, it's just about ensuring we are able to elevate um, or where best we can deliver those whiskey experiences that, that, that people are looking for. And, and I mean, how we do that is just, is, is like, you know, we're, we're about to do some tastings of limited edition bottles. And it's, it's just about how much can we get out there to allow people to try and, and experiment with. Um, Cause again, it, it just, it just keeps people engaged with, with what we're doing. So, um, so look, we, we do think the physical world, I mean, from, from, from my perspective, from our business's perspective, we probably like would like to see the Australians coming back this time next year. You know, hopefully, if we get a if we get a good um, a good winter in terms of how the pandemic the pandemic is is uh, is working and the vaccines, we'll maybe start to see people arrive um, and booking holidays. You know, with confidence, April May next year, and then hopefully into July August we start to see it a bit more. But probably we're probably. I, I would reckon we're maybe three years away from getting back to way back to the numbers we used to see, um, and um, so therefore, as I say, keeping the virtual the world keep keeping that going, but also evolving that to make sure that you know when we're speaking to our, our friends online, it's done so in a way that is that is relevant. Okay. Well. Uh, we were you mentioned that the three uh, that we we're going to quickly taste um we managed to uh, to sneak a few bottles of, of each of these limited releases into australia for our show uh just for the uh, the face-to-face -face guys uh, as a a kind of a uh, uh, say a teaser uh for hopefully uh, getting some some later on in the year uh when when, when we when we can um and uh, uh can you quickly just uh, uh introduce the, the three that we have yeah here? sure you know, because listen, I mean, Australia has been great for us. You know, um, I know it is growing. Um, it, it's it's growing really quickly in, in terms of, of, of how we look at it. You know, we have um, 
you, well, you've got just so the one I have at the moment is, is Deanston. So I'm sitting sitting at Deanston just now, as you know, and this is this is our um, it's a Deanston unaged Dragon's Milk um, um, Dragon's Milk Stout Cask Finish. So a very unusual name. I must admit, this has been this has been this has been in the process a long time. I, I always remember thinking the name. How how did we work that out? But for those, we 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 are in a partnership with um, uh, a, a beer company in Michigan um, and uh, a company called New Holland. And how we came across um, the New Holland uh, Beer Company was. Um, we source our whiskey from Kentucky. Our, our, sorry, we source our cast from from yes. Kentucky. <laughs> sorry, you slipped there. Yeah, there's these, other people that do it. that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we we source. So, we the majority of what we do is bourbon. We we love bourbon, and and Deanston, in terms of wood, Deanston is housed best in bourbon casks. Um, if I was to describe Deanston as a, as a single malt to, 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 to everyone today, it's just a beautiful, honeyed, um, very, Deanston itself sits, we are right in the heart of Scotland. Um, we are um, 45 minutes from Glasgow, um, same from Edinburgh, and, you know, to, to, you know, eight miles from us is Stirling Castle um, and the Wallace Monument, so scenes of great battles and, and great victories of, of, of yesteryear, um, beautiful scenery. We, we, we sit right on one of our national parks, um, the Loch Lomond National Park, so um, we, you know, there's hills, there's locks, there's glens, and, and we sit. But we're about, we're literally about a stone's throw from Dune Castle, so for, for those guys out there that uh, are familiar with Monty Python, that is where the Holy Grail, that's where the Holy Grail, <laughs> that's, where the have to visit, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the Knights of D came from. And, and, and most, most recently, uh, I don't know where you get it in Australia. Um, I, I, I don't know, has Amazon got to you yet? That small retailer that's turned into, uh, <laughs> what are you joking? So uh, Amazon Prime, they, uh, here we get a thing called Outlander, which is yeah, uh, Scott. Yeah. yeah, so you guys get that. Yeah. So that's also caused a boom in terms of, of tourism into Scotland. Um, because that's all, I mean, Outlander is, is how we all live here in Scotland. You know, we all, we're, all, <laughs> we're all roaming the hills and everything else. <laughs> so, but it, I mean, it's, it's, it has been superb for us. And I mean, literally last, month there were there was an American village being um, being filmed just over the back of the distillery here there's an estate um Landrick estate just behind us and that was so they, they film a lot of it around here which which has been which has been tremendous so that brings it in but however if you were if you were sitting where I'm sitting just now um you, the, the trees I know you guys are just coming into winter I saw is it is it spider season just now is it I'm seeing it's, it's I'm always seeing, spider it, season so it's spider season. So uh, <laughs> I just saw these, ones. but our, our our trees are are just beginning to to come into bloom, and and, and the the honestly outside is just just the aromas just now as as spring starts to kick in, and it and it very much smell for for my, listen, and I'm I'm not it, it just reminds me very much of what's in this glass, and um you know as I I was out for a walk this or I, I'm going to call it a run, but it was really a walk this morning. And our, our gorse, we have a, a, a gorse bush um, here in Scotland, which grows by the river. And I don't know, maybe you get them in Australia, you don't know, but it, when it comes into bloom, it's a, it's a beautiful yellow bud, but it just it just smells of coconut. It has the most incredible aromas of coconut. And I, and Deanston very much gets that. Um, and now, there's, there's, there's a, it's, maybe, it's maybe hidden in here more because of the stout influence on this and the wood influence. But it just reminds me of, as I say, where we live, we're so fortunate and, and our distilleries are, you know, all our distilleries are so beautifully located, as are all of them in Scotland, to be honest. Um, because we have to be, we're taking all the natural substances from, we're taking the water from the river um, and everything else and the air, we need that, that all has an impact on how our whiskey matures. So so what I, was, what I was leading up to there was just to say that Deanston's a very floral, honeyed whiskey um and you know very accessible to to consumers but very much reflects the landscape that um, that we're living in and, and that we find ourselves however this this little beauty so yeah this is our this is our dragons um our dragons milk stout cask 
So if you were to look up Dragon's Milk itself, is it's a black stout, a porter. So um, I've had this open for about an hour this morning. So it's cast strength as well, David. So it's coming in at 50% alk. So it's, it's quite high. So when, it, when, when you get this in your hands, guys, in, in a few months' time, hopefully, you know, it, it's quite high. Now, what's interesting is, I mean, it's a lovely light gold color. But I, as I said, I've, I've had it open. Because I, I, listen, when I, when I do these things, I always find, when I do these tastings, I always find either from, from, from people that, I'm, that, you know, we're interacting with, um, there's always something that comes out that you're not expecting. You know, and I immediately got Ovaltine from from this, and, and um, you know, which is an, which 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 is which is probably correct because the the oatiness is in there from from the stout. But um, as I say, what what it is, um, the devil's um, the devil's milk stout is is matured in American oak casks, and I, I realise I've gone off on a tangent and then come back in again. So to go back to that wood element. We were we source our cast. We we just so happen we source our, our cast from the same um, cooperage in in Kentucky and as as the um, New Holland Brewery. And so we, we came together to 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 say, I wonder what these would be like if we were to, to mature in these casts. So so this so what, what we've got is it's um, in terms of age, it's a non-age statement. So. Uh, our leading expression is a is 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 a Deanston twelve year olds, which which you guys get in Australia, and we have a, we have a kind of another non age statement, which is a which is called Virgin Oak. So in terms of age, you know, we, we, we're not allowed to say, but it's you know, it's it's not three years in a day, as you can tell by by from the nose, but but you know, um, I mean, what was really interesting for me, the alcohol strength is quite high, David, but. It's very soft on the nose. It, it's it's you know it's not um, it's not overpowering, um, and even at my time at eight in the morning. Um... You're right about that oatiness. It's uh, yeah coming the through the longer it's just in the glass. I mean, I I I, I put down initially. There's there's there, there's a fortifiedness to it as well, like a sweet. There's almost like a sweet wine, which again is reflective of. Of um of the stout that's in there. At least that's what I'm finding this morning. Anyway, early doors. This this room that means is, is is quite warm. So again, I don't know whether that's just elevated the aromas of the whiskey up. Um, there was raisins in there and 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 hints of hints of dark chocolate. Um, so because the stout the stout is famous, especially in that part of Michigan where um where you know the the brewery is. Um, and and with, which which again you know our we as I was saying we, we have a new master distiller a chap called Brendan McCarran who's just joined us yep. but but this whiskey was actually made by our master our master blender who's called Julianne Fernandez and um, what's really interesting about using the, the stout cask is that it's it's a dark beer whereas we were saying earlier we're a very we're a light floral whiskey. So that, that was a bit of a risk going into, oh, well, not a risk, but, you know, in terms of innovation, it was it was interesting they decided to go down that route. But there's no doubt, I mean, even just now, I don't know how you felt, but there's a real sweetness to it. That that aftertaste is just very sweet and, and coming to it. And that's before we add water. That's a, that's a cast strength. So, look, another wee feature of our whiskeys across from Tomomori, Lechek, and Deanston, Bonahaven, is that all our whiskeys are bottled at 46.3% alcohol, we're, we're non-chill filtered. So what, what we mean by that is, is if I'm to, and I'll add some water this just now, if I was to add some, I don't know where you can see this the camera, but if I was to add some water to that, you can see the whiskey, the whiskey starts to go swirling. And that is, that's the, that's the water reaction, reacting with the natural oils and the esters that's in the scotch. And then I don't know where you can see that, if I can hold my hand steady. Um, it's lighter at the bottom. So what happens is that water, the water drops to the bottom and all the fatty acids and esters rise to the top. So for us, that's flavor. So that, that is why we bottle at, at 46.3% is to keep that flavor in. If, if, if our guys were to, to dip their, their finger in the top of that, that what's the, called the ring of gold, we'll feel it's very oily. It's very oily and fatty, and which is great moisturizer, especially at this time in the morning. Um, and for sunscreen, which which we obviously need a lot of in Scotland, but um, 
but yeah, but what that does, it just it just it just opens the whiskey up. But but it explains but obviously with, with the dragon's milk just here, it's um it is cast strength, and when we add a bit of water to that, oof, up it up it comes. Another another kind of layer of flavor and aromas uh, aromas are 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 kind of released. So a characteristic of Deanston is that honey. And I don't know where you're getting a bit of honey coming through yeah, there. Absolutely, the, the, the honeyness in the floral certainly certainly comes through on the finish, and and, and just the, the more it sits in the, in the glass. Yeah. So so I mean that I mean I mean it's very sweet. It's 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 really interesting, and and I think it's the same in, in terms of what Julianne was looking to achieve. Um, it's it's it as I say it was quite brave in terms of 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 in, in my view in terms of that innovation. So um, I think there's there's that kind of hoppiness. So and the finish, the finish is long and 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 um, and and eely, eel like an eel as well. So um, it's interesting. So I was reading uh, reading some of the notes about the uh, the milk stout. They say that it's they 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 say they advise it. It's very good with red meat. So again, that kind of it's it's kind of different to how we would we would say Deanston would be drunk, but I think there's a nice balance there. So I think if you guys look out for that coming through, I think it's it's well worth a try when it, when it comes. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, from from an average statement to a twenty three year old with the uh, the Tobermory. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, so again, so th this is a bit of a this is a bit of a flagship um for us. In fact, is the flagship for us. Um, and um, you know, um, some 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 I don't know whether you, some guys might remember we did have a oh my goodness I keep I keep thinking like it was like five years ago David but it's, it's probably it's fifteen years ago or seventeen years ago we had an expression a Tomori fifteen year old which was kind of legendary and that wooden right? box so, with the island of Malkadat that was well that, that's was amazing. One. Yes, <laughs> that's that's the one. So this 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 is the same spirit, believe it or not. So and, and how how we did that was we were at, so at Tobamori. I mean, as I say, at Deanston here, um, we we sit on. We've got about thirty thousand casks in at the distillery at Tobamori. When when we bought when, when Burn Stewart bought the company in nineteen ninety two, the distillery. Sorry, nineteen ninety two. The, the Dunwich warehousing, unfortunately, had been sold off. So we we don't we we hold about maybe maybe I don't know fifty or sixty casts just now, and what we were doing with the total boy fifteen year old was um, we were maturing all we were maturing the um, the um, excuse me can you hear that apologies um, uh, we that, uh, that sounded like an earthquake but I'm sure it wasn't. <laughs> It's um, we've got cast being rolled above our heads just now, so um, so that's what's going on. But but yeah, we were maturing the fifteen-year-old stock in in big all in in um, Gonzalez Bias Oloroso casks on Mull specifically to do this. So, but as I say, it was it was it was fifteen years ago. Some of this some of the whiskey was kept there, um, and it, it was just a lovely story. And as you say, the packaging also resonated really well. That dark brown bottle that it came in. So this this is the liquid that was distilled at the same time, and um, we decided to bring it back out again. So so I mean it's got that. I mean it's, it's an incredible color. Um, it's an incredible color. And again, I've had this sitting out for maybe forty five minutes, just you know ahead of you know ahead of ourselves having a chat. And I mean the room is just full. But when you go, you know it's when you when you put that to your nose, it's just you know it's it's. Um, I, I think there's, there's that dark, rich fruit cake that, that you're looking to, to have. Um, Christmas cake is, is all over it. And um, again, look, I mean, I was saying, you know, I always I always write down things. It's, it's from all or also, you know, you'd expect a nuttiness as well. You know, a, a trademark or a characteristic of, of all or also is, is kind of nuttiness and walnuts. And it, again, more more kind of more imagery or reflections of Christmas. And, and this is this is what this is, you know. Um, um, so that that is that you know when you when you so again so I said that's bottled at 46.3 percent alcohol um unchill filtered as we talked about earlier but at 23 years I don't know how you feel you just had a wee, a wee drop there but um I, it doesn't need water at all for for me it not doesn't need water at all however 
I mean, I, I, I've got quite a healthy one there. Um, I reckon that might, might that might take me, I know, a, a, an hour and a half to drink because it's it's full body. It's it's it's, mm. it's all it's all in there. Um, you know, vanilla, ripe oranges, um, there's the toasted barley, um, and citrus notes coming through. I don't know how you're finding just on on your mouth. Is it quite salty? I mean, I, I get a lot of saltiness from that. Not. Uh, let me try again. Not too much. The saltiness is very much a, a characteristic of of yeah, um, just on just on the on the on the front. Yes, just in the front, which is which is similar to what we see at Bonahaven. So again, those coastal distilleries, you know, I mean, I was saying, uh, uh, we do our maturation for Tobomori. We actually take it off the island, like a lot of distillers do in Isla, because there's just just not the room. But whatever's going on there, there's the saltiness, and um, there's there's still that characteristic coming through as we distill that. As we distill that, so um, and even after twenty three years, it's for me anyway. It, it's there. And it's like, I just, I don't know about you, I just want to chew that. It's, it's very chewable yeah. in, in terms of, of, of you know. So um, that, somebody said to me, it's like a, like a kind of salty undercurrent. Um, so, so yeah, so look, it's, 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 we're very proud of this. It's, it's, and you can see from that kind of color there, we, we just love, and, and the complexity. And I, I think in terms of reminiscing, it, it has everything we would want from it. Um, and then what's going to happen is I think over time we're going to release a 24 year old, a 25 year old, because we've got we've got we've, we've got some parcels of, of this spirit that we're able to do. So um, for, for you guys out there, look forward to that coming to Australia and then look at, and look forward to the, the age extensions that comes through. Fantastic. And, uh, and then the last you want me to jump to the final one. So this, this, listen, this, this is a beauty. I, again, I don't know whether you can see that, but it is the most incredible red color, you know, almost rosé, dare I say. Yep. <laughs> That's the first first impression is that it's a rosé. It's, it's got yeah. that amazing rose color. Yeah. And, and it, it just it just goes to show the influence of, of um, oh, I mean, when you put that to your nose, David. <laughs> Wow, that smokiness just comes at you. But like, like I was saying earlier on, there's a, there's a sweet smoke to it. Um, almost like a, a creosote soap. There's a kind of there's a kind of creosote soap to it as it as it comes through, and the sweetness. But look, that 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 pinkness. And again, you know, you mentioned our parent company, which is Distel. That that's where a lot of the investment has gone in. Has gone into um our, our wood policy as, as we call it so a lot of investment into wood um and i mean depending on what expert what expert you speak to um flavor flavor it comes you know 85 percent of flavor or 80 percent of flavor comes from the wood I, I i'm not quite sure to be honest um and I, all i know is that i'm always amazed that when we have when and visitors are too I think I think you know it's really hard to compre comprehend when you're standing in a still house and you see the new mixed spirit coming off the still um, and it's and it's beautifully clear and people are going is that whiskey and well technically it's not it's obviously new mixed spirit but but it, yes it, it will be in three years but that that's what you know in this instance you know as a, a, again and this is where the virtual world maybe doesn't work but that rosé in terms of um <laughs> you know that that's what happens to that clear liquid so you know there's lots there's lots of flavor that will come from come from the wood and uh, come from the barley comes from the fermentation and and but also the distilling that copper contact is so important as we distill as, as we get flavor and viscosity into the spirit um but then once we once we, we put we take it into the wood and lay it down for, you know, again, this is a, a kind of another non-age spirit for us, non-age statement, sorry. We, we, it's matured for one and a half years in, in the Rioja, in the, the red wine casks. Um, but that's again, so that's where flavor and color, um, you know, I'm, again, I don't know whether you know, in Scotland here, we have, we have quite cold winters. Uh, it does tend to get quite cold here. And what happens is, you know, the, the, the oak, um, in the summer, the the oak opens up, the pores the wood oak open up, and the alcohol races in. And then in the winter, when it does get cold, those pores close, 
and the alcohol withdraws. And what happens with over time is, is, we, is we see a transfer of color uh, uh, and, and of flavor. But also what we find is, you know, American oak in particular. Um, so again, another choice for using Rioja is that Rioja wine is, is, is um, matured in, in American oak. Um, and what we find is that that American oak, it cools the spirit. It takes the heat out of the alcohol o over time. So, so yeah, so have a, have a wee try. I mean, so that color immediately draws you in, sorry. Now, to me, that the, the classic goes... Lechek um, style is, is more, the way I describe it is, is earthy forest floor. More, yes. more, than, a, more yeah. than your classic Isla Pete. It's, it's got that, that uniqueness in terms of that, 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 that mustiness, um, like damp foliage. Yep. That certainly is somebody, a, once, somebody once described it as a bonfire an extinguished bonfire on, on, on Tobomori Beach. And, and what he meant, there, there isn't quite a beach at Tobomori, but I knew what he meant, you know, you know, in terms of, of you know, it, it, it just has that, that, that right level of smokiness that just makes you, makes you kind of um, wish for that fire coming, uh, that was there. And, um, but yeah, no, you're quite right. There's a must -ness. I mean, what, what we find, I think, and this, I mean, somebody had told me they were getting Turkish delight from it when they had a week. Yes. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I, was, I wasn't going to say that because you kind of lead into that with the color. Yeah. Thought maybe yeah. it's just subliminal, yes. but yeah, that was the first first thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And then just just on the tongue, there's a kind of black pepper coming through, and um, and and then dark chocolate. So again, it, it, you know, going back to to what I said, and I realize I have gone off on tangents, but. Lechek does have that sweetness, that sweetness, sorry, that, you know, as you say, where, where the Isle of Whiskies, they'll be, they'll be big and pungent, whereas this, this is not, this is not it. There, there's that, you know, there's that um, contradiction of, of smoke and peat, whereas, but there's the sweetness there too, which is, which is lovely. Well, Peter, thank you for introducing these, uh, these, these whiskies, and uh, um, I'm sure that uh, uh, there's going to be a huge amount of interest when we uh, work out when we can get them into Australia and uh, hopefully we can see you here uh, at some stage uh, and uh, otherwise we'll have to see you in Scotland and on the, the beaches of, uh, of Tobermory on Mull. <laughs> well we'd love to we'd love, we can't wait to see everybody coming back and listen vice versa I would, I would love to come out there and uh, and, and just tell our story and, and, and share a few drums so we great, David thanks very much have a great weekend Thank you, Peter.